Hello everyone. Welcome to our session on applying to post-secondary, brought to you by your Penn High Counseling Department and your Careers and Apprenticeship Coordinator. What an exciting year you have ahead of you. It definitely can get overwhelming at times, but we are here to help. Hopefully, this presentation will answer many of the questions that you have about the application process and what you will need to know in order to get started. And of course, if you have any further questions at the end, you can come find us and we can help. Post-Secondary BC is a government-sponsored website that every grade 11 and 12 student should be familiar with. Check out the website, but even more importantly, attend the virtual sessions which provide access and contact information for whatever your post-secondary interest may be. College one and two year programs, trades programs, BCIT tech type programs, as well as university programs will be offered. In addition to the BC Virtual Fair, there is also the Canadian Universities Virtual Event, and there will be representatives from over 50 plus participating universities in Canada. They'll be ready to answer your questions, provide information, and just get you connected to their institution. There will also be some of those BC schools in attendance um, if you're looking for another place to just to connect with them. There are seven dates listed below. You can find the link on our Facebook page, on our news bulletin, as well as on that team page. So if you need some help signing up, just come down to the office and we'll help you get started. There are many great ways you can advance your post-secondary education. Certificates are usually shorter in length, ranging from six months to a year. Diplomas are two years long and can actually stretch into a four-year degree. Degrees are generally four years in length, and apprenticeships range from two to four years. Hi everyone, I'm Trevor Knowlton. I'm the District Career and Apprenticeship Coordinator. I just want to take a minute to let you know about the different trades and apprenticeship programs that we run here at Penn High. Right now I have apprentices taking Okanagan College courses at the Penticton campus, Kelowna and Vernon, and even up at the TRU campus up in Kamloops. So these are trades and apprenticeship programs that run approximately six months long. And through the Youth Train and Trades program, I can cover the tuition for these programs if students still do it while they're in the school system. So please come see me in the Penn High Counseling area and I'd love to chat about these different programs if you're interested in a career in the trades and apprenticeships. In addition to that, if you're already working in the trades as a, either a part-time job or uh, you worked last summer, please come see me because we can actually sign you up as an apprentice under the ITA and there's some great benefits to doing that. So I can let you know when you come talk to me about those. In addition, on your screen, you also see some specialty programs that we run here at Penn High. The Healthcare Assistant Program has just started in September. That's in partnership with NBIT. But I also want to let you know, second semester, with, in partnership with Okanagan College, we're running the Gateway to Technology Program. So for any students that are thinking about technology and a possible career in technology, please come see me and I'll let you know more details about that Gateway to Technology Program and how it can benefit you. We're also hoping this year that the RCMP and fire accountings will come back this year. In past two years, they've just been on hold due to COVID, and we're hoping those might come back second semester as well. So come see me in the Penn High Counseling Department. And I'd love to chat with you about these different career programs. Thanks. This page outlines some general criteria for students entering into the apprenticeship program. I encourage any students to come have a chat with me down in the counseling area. I'd be happy to go through it with them. There are many ways to get to university. Most colleges offer a transfer program. These transfer programs are generally cheaper, closer to home, and smaller. Okanagan College campus in Penticton, for example, offers an excellent bridge to a full university degree. So when do you apply? Many institutions are actually already open for applications, with the majority of them opening by October 1st. Application deadlines are different for each institution. Typically, these range from mid-January to the end of February, but some are sooner and some are later, and some it depends on what you are applying for. 
For example, to be considered for the UBC major entrance scholarship or an early offer of admissions, applications must typically be received by UBC before December 1st. Nursing deadlines vary considerably by institution and many of those application timelines are also much shorter. Many nursing program applications open October 1st and close in the beginning of December. Make sure you know your deadlines for your program as once the deadline has passed, they will not accept your application. Most schools require online applications and online application fees, which are non-refundable. These fees range from about $30 to $100 for domestic applicants and $100 or more for international applicants. As noted on the slide, applications are not considered for admission until the application fee is paid. So be sure to pay that application fee right away. Education Planner BC is an amazing website for you to get connected with. Here is a place that you can apply to all of the listed below post-secondary institutions. For institutions not using Education Planner BC, there are links to their application service on the Education Planner BC website as well. So please connect with this site and get familiar with it. Education Planner BC is more than just an application service. Yes, absolutely, you can apply through this website. However, you can also look for advice, find information, and plan and use their resources. There's all kinds of things you can search in here. There's also scholarships and bursaries. If you're not sure of which program you are interested in taking or you have a program and you're just not sure which institution you want to attend, you can search those things. So please become familiar with this site. If you are interested in applying out of province, application processes can be quite different from BC. Be sure and find provincial websites early on and so you don't miss deadlines. So the big question is how do you get in? Each institution has its own way to calculate admissions. In the past, BC institutions only required English 12 and three other grade 12 approved courses, but now every institution has their own criteria. So some examples, we have UVic Arts and Humanities. They still only require English 12 and three approved grade 12 courses, and they will take the three grade 12 courses with the highest marks. UNBC is very similar, the English 12 and three approved grade 12 courses, um, but they also require an additional grade 12 course, and this could be an elective or an academic. So just a slight difference. UBC, for the same program, Arts and Humanities, encourages applicants to present a minimum of six grade 12 courses, and they are also going to look at all grade 11 and 12 academic courses when calculating averages. Students will also have to submit a personal profile in their application. SFU is similar to UBC, and they base their admissions on a minimum of five program-specific approved grade 12 courses, and they will also base admission evaluations on grade 11 and grade 12 courses from their approved list. So looking at one program at four different universities, you can see how it varies. Um, it's also important to note that some post-secondary institutions require a language 11 to enter the university, while others will expect you to have a language 12 to leave the university before you get your degree. Um, SFU and UBC Vancouver require the language 11 to get in and the language 12 to get out are UBC Okanagan and Thompson Rivers University, their arts and humanities programs. So make sure you know where you want to go, what you need to do to meet admission requirements, and be sure that you've checked the required courses for your selected program. There is fine print, so make sure you read it and do your research. Admission requirements and university approved courses. It is very important to research the post-secondary schools you are interested in. Each university will have their own entrance requirements. It is important to know the courses you will need for admissions. It is also very important to know the grade point average you will need for the programs you are interested in. In general, students will need to take at least four of the courses listed below. Also, be aware of the deadlines for high school students taking online courses. 
The deadline for completion usually comes around the end of January. Every institution has what is called a minimum admissions requirement. The initial requirement might be that you have 67% in a certain subject or 70% as an overall average, but it is important to know that this is just the minimum to apply. And just because you may meet the minimum requirement doesn't necessarily mean you will get accepted. Institutions post these minimum averages for consideration, but cutoffs for admission may be considerably higher than the posted minimum. As you can see from the slide, consideration for most programs have averages starting in the low 80s or even higher depending on the institution and the program. Now the averages on the slide are only estimates and do vary every year based on who applies, but it really is a good guide to get you started. In good news, most college programs are first come first serve. If you meet their minimum requirements and qualifications for the program and there is room in the program, you are in. It is definitely not a bad idea to have a college program as a backup if it is not your first choice already. As you plan for post-secondary, be sure to have a backup plan if your first choice falls through. Admission issues can be avoided by ensuring you have the courses and grades required, but having a contingency plan is always important. In the middle of the slide, we have indicated how your second choice on an application can be crucial to attending your institution of choice. Nursing may be full, but sciences can be more accessible and offer a bridge to the nursing program. Applying to more than one institution is important. Last minute applications to any institution is not possible if your first choice falls through. So now you've decided, you know where you want to go, you know what program you want to apply for, so you start applying. You apply, you pay your fees, you release your transcripts through BC Transcript Service that we will talk about. You're going to check your email because that's how universities and colleges are going to get a hold of you. They're not going to text you, they're not going to call you, they're going to send you an email. So please remember to check that. You can apply for your awards and scholarships at that institution. And after acceptance and things like that, you can look for your housing um, and register for your courses eventually. It's an exciting process. It'll happen faster than you think. And this is just sort of a breakdown of what to look forward to. Transcripts are a very important part of your university application. When you're completing your application, you should always check your emails to make sure you haven't missed any tasks. Some universities are going to ask you to self-report your grades. If they ask for self-reporting, it is very important that you meet their deadlines. The number one way to give universities access to your transcripts is to go to the BC Ministry of Education site. Go to Student Transcript Services, create an account, and select the universities you want to have access to your transcript. You can also send transcripts to the main office. There are blue forms in front of Mrs. Rigby's desk. Simply fill them out and hand them in to Mrs. Rigby. Not many schools will require transcripts to be sent this way, but it is an option. As Mr. Nakoni mentioned, Student Transcript Services is the best way for institutions to get your grades. Student Transcript Services is an online application for students where they can view their school marks, look at provincial scholarships, look at transcripts, and send transcripts electronically. In fact, this might be the only way that many of your institutions will accept and receive your interim and final marks, and it is only something that the student can do. In order to set up an account, you will need your PEN, which stands for Personal Education Number. This can be found on the top of all of your report cards or in the details section of MyEd. You will use it to set up an account and log into the Student Transcript Services dashboard to make your selections and send your transcripts on. We do have further instructions in the Counseling Office if you get stuck, so come see us and we can give you that sheet of paper. Housing applications. This is where you get to start thinking about where you might be living your first year of college or university. Some universities offer guaranteed housing for first-year students, such as UVic, VIU, and UBC. And some housing at the institution is limited and is available only on a first-come, first-served basis, so you really have to get your application in there. 
some institutions require a completely separate application for housing. So please make sure that you've checked their website, you have specific information for their campus housing, and pay that fee. And really start thinking about what that might look for you that first year. Okay, let's review what you need to do. Make sure you research your institutions and your programs of interest. That's where the PSI night and the Canadian Universities event will come in super handy. Know the entrance requirements for each of the institutions and the programs that you want to apply for. Make sure you know how to apply and the deadlines for applying as well as deadlines for housing. Have plans A, B, and C for your academic programs or for the places that you want to go. Make sure you pay attention to all dates and deadlines. You don't want to miss any of those. And we suggest that you keep all university applications, award applications, login IDs, etc., passwords in the same place for reference because you can't lose those. And lastly, start now. Don't wait until the last moment. Some of these applications are quite large. The personal profiles or the supplementary applications can take a really long time. So make sure you give yourself a lot of time and it's not a rushed job because those are weighted pretty heavily. Final steps. These are exciting times. Please check your emails regularly to make sure you do not miss any important notices. Accept your offer and put down your deposit. Work with an advisor to figure out the courses you'll need for your first year. Register for courses. Thank you everybody for listening. Please connect with us if you have any questions at all. We are here to help and happy to help. Again, students with the last name A to G are with Ms. Richter. H to N are with Vari, Ms. Dunnett. O to Z are with Mrs. Redford. And OHA and Kisu are with Mr. Nakoni. Have a great day. Hope to see you soon.